Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Brienne from Beyond Creation and in today's video as promised we have my craft room cleanup and a craft room tour. I've not actually done a craft tour video at all so this is the first one and I am so super excited about it because craft room organization videos and craft room tours are actually some of my favorite videos to watch here on YouTube. I don't have a massive craft space like some of the crafters that I've seen here on YouTube. This is actually our spare bedroom. It is a fully functional spare bedroom and it is also a fully functional craft room. So this is the room where I have the most space to set up my craft desk and have all of my things. I try to use some crafting storage solutions to help keep me organized and keep everything in a place and so it has a home to limit the mess because I am actually a fairly scattered crafter. I am really good at pulling out a bunch of different things and making a mess um, and then having to go in and clean it. So it is helpful for me to have everything have a home, have a place, and I need to be better about just putting things back in their place when I'm done with it, which is where the craft room cleanup comes in because in December I did my 12 days of Christmas crafts series. So that meant um, every other day I was creating a brand new craft. So there was 12 different crafts that I created using 12 different selections of products. I have a lot of stuff that I had out um, that I haven't put away yet. I was using my maker, I was using my trimmers and my scoreboards and a bunch of different items that I now need to go back in and tidy, which is perfect because it gives me an opportunity to share with you all the storage solutions that I've come up with, having a craft space in within another functional space. Most of my storage is items from Michaels. So I have their modular systems. I use mainly uh, their modular systems and then their plastic storage containers. So mainly the 12 by 12 storage containers for my uh, collections, my 12 by 12 papers. I have modular shelving units that those 12 by 12 containers fit easily into. Um, and then I also have a modular drawer set, which is just over here. I have a rolling cart that was from Michaels as well. And then I have kind of um, a piece that sits on my desk and it is kind of a magazine style and then there are so there are one two three five kind of magazine style cubbies and then there are three drawers underneath that and then I have a desktop carousel to hold all of my little tools and so I basically use half of this spare bedroom and then I use about I would say about a third of the closet space that we have um, where I store things and it's using the closet helps me keep things out of view. It makes the space appear tidy which is great. So we're going to be doing a tidy first. Um, I will give you a look at what the space looks like as it is now and then after we are done tidying, that is when I am going to go through item by item. I will show you how I have everything stored, what I store where, why I like to store it there. And I'll also leave a link down below for all of my storage solutions. Um, so if they're, if they're available, some of them I think are a little bit older just because they were handed down to me from my mom. Um, so I will link down below what I can. I'll go through what they all are. Um, how I use them, why I use them that way. Um, so I think it's going to be great. I'm really excited. Let's get into it. So this is currently what my crafting space looks like. I use the top of the bed here for some of my bins and then there's also some storage in the side of the bed here. Just some shelving that I use for storage as well. I'm hoping to go through that. This is my craft cart. Again, that one's from Michael's. Here is 
one of the drawer systems that is from Michaels as well. This is one of the HomeSense containers that one of the bins that I use to store items. I have these little um, smart Wi-Fi LED light strips. I use this as a little stand for my laptop like so and it just brings it up a little bit and allows me to stand and work on there. I have here some projects that are on the go in this little container that's holding some scraps from my wedding album. I have that on my printer here. This is that magazine style case that I was telling you about with the three drawers and then the little magazine style cubbies. This is my trimmer and my scoreboard, my little desk carousel, and then this is stuff from my last haul video that I did that I need to find a home for, some scraps that I have laying around. So I need to get all of this stuff organized. And then in this closet here is where I keep my 12 by 12 little storage bins. These are the 12 by 12 bins that I was talking about. They are just the simply tidy 12 by 12 bins from Michaels. I have a bigger one here and then I have my Cricut Easy Press on top of there. So this is where I keep all of my cardstock and then I have a little bit down there as well. That's my hunky dory. So we are going to go through, we're going to tidy it up and we are going to get it organized and then I'll go through and show you how I have everything organized, what all I have, and we'll go from there. couple more 
bins from Michael's this evening. So I picked up the reading card keeper and then I picked up one of the storage keepers, the 12 by 12 one, but the one that's deeper than the regular 12 by 12 ones. So I think this is gonna be really helpful for the, um, this, the card keeper definitely for my overage of cards that I have. And then I'm not sure what I'm gonna use this one for yet. I haven't quite decided but we'll continue going through, purging, figuring everything out, and we'll see what ends up in there. Here. This is just on the frame of the bed that's in here. I have an empty spare bin that I've just popped my camera into for the time being. Once I have some more things that I need to put in there, I will take the camera out. But for now, it is working for that. In this bin here, this bin is just from the dollar store. I just have some completed albums in here and then some extra cards that are done as well. So I just house these in here it's just a way to keep them there all together and then here is the newest greeting card keeper that I got from Michaels I haven't even taken the sticker off this one yet but this house is just some more completed greeting cards down in this cubby right here this cubby I have holding some finished album bases so when I get into the mood to create album bases I like to make a bunch of them and so these are all completed album bases all they need is some decorative paper so once I am in the mood um, to craft something but I don't want to have to make the album base I have these at the ready that I can just grab and throw some paper onto and then I'll have a finished album so doing that just, I find it makes it easier when crafting. Um, some days 
are lazier than others, it's nice to have some bases to work with. Um, on the days that I don't really want to be designing a base, I have them ready to go. All they need is decorative cardstock. The second shelf right here, this is another one of my greeting card keepers from Michaels. That one has um, just some more finished greeting cards. And then this shoe box here houses just some incomplete card kits that I have on the go right now. So these are items in this bin that I just need to finish up, but they are organized and all together when um, the mood strikes me to go and finish them. Or if I'm not feeling particularly inspired any given day, I can go and just work on these. And usually working on the pre-made projects like this, it inspires me to um, make new items and it gives me inspiration for future projects. So this bin is items that I need to finish. Moving on right here, this is my crafting cart. So on the top here, I have two unfinished albums. This one right here, this is something brand new that I'm working on for the new year. I am putting together a tutorial for this. It is empty, it's not done yet, but I am working on this. This album here, this is my wedding album that I have not yet finished. So I have that sitting here for when I'm ready to pull this out and work on that. I have it here and ready to go. I am, I wanna say I'm about 50% done with this one. Um, but I, my goal was to finish it last year, but we're gonna be finishing it this month. This is the other newest bin that I got from Michaels. I decided that I wanted to use this bin for papers that I want to use this year or um, within the first couple months. And I'm hoping that this bin will be on a continuous rotation. So the top bag just has some pattern cardstock that I think will go with many different projects. And so it's just bits and pieces from different collections um, that I've used most of the collection for, and there's really not a whole lot. There's just like a sheet or two left. So I have this here to pull from on any current projects that I'm using that I think um, some of the pattern cardstock will go with. So that is what that is there for. I also have in here um, just some from the Simple Stories card kit. These simple cards, I have the instructions. Just I'll use this for inspiration on future projects. So I have that here. This is the 49 and market paper that I just got, but also the leftovers from my card class that I did. And then the little ephemera bits that I purchased. I have a, some Valentine's paper that I'm gonna be using very, very soon. And then just some Christmas papers that I only have a little bit left of that I would like to just get used up. I used I made a big project with this spring farmhouse paper um, and there's not a whole lot left but there's enough left for a couple more projects so I'm just I want to finish that off. I want to use the rest of this little recipe paper here. Um, this Peter Pan paper. I started an album ages ago and I just never finished it so I want to get that finished so I have that paper in here. And yeah just some other Christmas papers that there's not a whole lot left of but enough to do a couple of projects. So so this is my bin of cardstock that I want to use up and get out um, before I open up anything else. So if I'm going to be working on a spring project, if I'm going to be working on a Valentine's project or um, a Peter Pan project, um, I want to pull from in here first before I open up anything brand new. So that is what I've decided to use this bin for. And here is the actual crafting cart. So on the top here, this I use to put that bin on. Um, so it's nice that there is a lid here and it can act as a functional like top space to put stuff on as well. But this comes off. And in here, I have my scoring tape, masking tape, foam dots, foam tape. I have some binder rings in here just for some projects that I have ideas for. I have some Velcro. I have some 3M hangers in here. I have some elastic. So this is just where I put a lot of my um, 
actual like adhesive typed items. So I put those all in the top of my cart. So on the second shelf in here, I have a lot of my adhesives and some tools here. So I have my Aileen's Tacky Glue. I have my Art Glitter Glue. This is about halfway full. And I have my, um, the smaller, I think it's the six ounce, um, the six ounce or the four ounce that I use for actual crafting that has the precision tip. So um, when I run out of glue in that smaller one, I add glue from this bigger bottle here. And then I also got the Barely Art Glue. So my idea was once I'm through with this Art Glitter Glue, so Art Glitter Glue can't ship in the wintertime. It'll freeze solid because it's water-based. So because of that, this is all that I have left of my Art Glitter Glue, and we are, winter has just begun. So my idea was to buy the Barely Art Glue because this can ship all year round. Um, so I bought the 11 ounce refill of this and my idea is to use this to refill my little art glitter glue crafting four ounce bottle. Um, and so I'll use this to refill it and I'm going to see and I'll compare how I enjoy the two and then I'll go from there and see what I want to buy in future. So I have that. I have some gold spray paint here that was from when we got married and then I have some tacky spray Aileen's glue here as well I don't use this really um, it doesn't do what I thought it was gonna do so um, but I just haven't gotten rid of it next here I have my mini cinch binder um, coils so I have the one inch ones and then I have I think it's half inch ones or quarter inch ones um so I have a variety in this bin right here this is from home sense this has just some fine tip felts and um some other markers that I put in there in this little bin here I have my heat embossing tool this one is the Sizzix one I believe yes it is it's my Sizzix heat embossing tool and then I have my mini glue gun that is from Michael's in this glass jar here, I have my We Are Memory Keepers punches. So I have my angle, I have my stub and scallop, I have um, stub and deco, and I also have my eyelet punch here. And I just put these, this is a candle from Bath and Body Works. Once I had finished burning the candle down, um, I just added hot water, boiling water into it just to get the rest of the wax out. Now I just use it as a storage container. They work really, really well for me. And in here I also have my Cricut pens right here. I have just the set of the variety of all the colors. So that is the second shelf here. And the last shelf on my cart, I have my electronic die cutting machine. So this is the Go Power and Emboss machine. This is by Couture Creations. I don't have a manual die cutting machine. I only have this electronic one. I'd like to get a manual one. Um, I am torn between the Spellbinders new and improved one um i forget exactly what that one's called or the big shot um, i'm torn between those two if you have one or the other and you have a preference um if you've used both and have a preference please leave me a comment down below and tell me your thoughts because i am wanting to get one but that is everything that is on my cart so beside my cart, I have my modular storage drawers. These are from Michaels. I'll link down below what I'm able to find, but this is my modular drawers. On top of the drawers, I have this bin. This is just from HomeSense. I have some completed projects in here. It just kind of keeps them out of sight and um, everything looks tidy. And then on top of this, these are my LED light strips. I use the boxes to balance my laptop on just to bring it up a little bit higher while I am working. And in between that, I have my mini cinch. And then at the back here, I have um, a cutting board that is just from the dollar store. 
I use the cutting board when I am using my Cricut heat press. I think that this works really, really well. I have my score pal in back here. I have my Fiskars trimmer back here. And then I also have my We Are Memory Keepers envelope, envelope punch board. I use this mainly for the little corner rounder, but I have used it to make envelopes before. So I have those here, easy to grab while I'm working at my desk. Now on to the actual drawers. So in this top drawer, I have some more papers that and projects that I am currently in the middle of. So I have some pre-made cards here. I have a couple more autumn themed cards that I've not quite finished yet. I have a bunch of the hunky dory cards and toppers here that I can go on um, whenever I'm feeling like pulling out some hunky dory Christmas cards. These I uh, used in the card class that I took and this is all the scraps that were left from that. So I have these to play around with and then beneath all of that is my wedding paper. So I have the entire collection here. This is by Simple Stories. Um, so whenever I do pull out my wedding album, which is up over here, whenever I pull that out, um, I go into this drawer for the cardstock and all of the embellishments and everything is easy to grab and at the ready. Once I am done with my wedding album, I'll probably put the next big project that I'm working on in this top drawer. It just makes it really easy um, to grab and my wedding album is massive. I know I'm gonna have quite a bit of cardstock left over. So I'm thinking I'll probably end up making a couple um, of wedding albums for myself just because our wedding was over the span of about three days so I have lots of that in here and that is what I put in this top drawer the next drawer down this one I put in um, all of the tools for my electronic die cutting machine so I have my plates here and um all of that. I also have this corner rounder here and then all of my instruction booklets for my mini cinch, for my electronic die cutting machine, for my Cricut. I have all the instructions in here and like this. This is from the uh, envelope punch board. So I have all my instructions in here whenever I need them. Um, if I need to refer to them, they're just in the second drawer here. In the third drawer has all of my ephemera bits. So basically what I do is some of these are just from the dollar store, but some of the stuff like this, this is a Halloween, I believe this was a doodlebug, doodlebug collection. Um, but I used all the paper from this collection and I had tons of rub-ons and stickers and ephemera bits left. So what I do when I finish a collection and I still have all of the embellishments left is I pop them into this drawer. Um, they're, it's, it's organized a little bit. This is um, like dad, family, spring, etc. And then I have a baggie that holds all of my Christmas. So any collection that I finish and I still have some embellishments left from, I will pop them in here just so that I can pull from them. Um, a lot of times the embellishments do match other collections, um, whether it's by the same company or by a different company, just sometimes the colors will match beautifully. So I like to keep all of that to use and I don't mind mixing and matching different collections. So that is what goes in that drawer. This next drawer down. So what I have here is it's from my Spellbinders Advent. I've just not gone in and separated all of the items that came out of the Advent calendar. So I have those in here. I have pre-made envelopes and card bases in here. Just when I am making a card, it's easy to come in here, grab a card base, grab a envelope, and we know we're ready to go. I have my Versamark watermark stamp pad. This I use for my embossing. I have the Ranger Distress Oxide ink in black soot. This is the ink that I just bought because I ran out of black ink. I also in here have my Pink Fresh washi tape. So I have three of those. And then beneath that, I added the washi tape already to some strips of cardstock. So when I am looking to have some Pink Fresh pink fresh florals on any of my projects all I have to do is run 
this cardstock through my electronic die cutting machine and I will have some perfectly cut out pink fresh gold foiled washi embellishments. So that is what is in this drawer. And the last drawer just has some of my inks and some alphabet stamps. So um, there's tons of room for more in this drawer here. I may end up moving my inks to another location just so that I have another drawer for more paper or whatever I need the space for. But for now, this is where I have my inks. And that is it for my cart and my modular drawer system. Next, we'll move up onto the corner of my desk here. So in the corner, I have my printer. My printer is the HP DeskJet 2742E. I love this printer. It works really well for what I need to use it for. And on top of my printer, I have this little tray. This is from the dollar store. I use this um, for all of my scraps from making my wedding album. The instructions that I'm following for my wedding album, um, basically she uses a lot of the scraps that are left and she gives instructions on how to cut the cardstock so that you can use it for other parts of the album. So I am keeping all of the scraps that I make with this collection so that I make sure that I am not having to cut into more sheets than I need to. So that is what I put on top of my printer. Moving on to this here. So this is also from Michaels, but I was not able to find this anywhere. Um, but basically it's just like magazine style cubbies on the top, three drawers on the bottom. And on the top, I have my engagement album. I have a bride album that I made. This is another bin from HomeSense where I have some more completed projects in there. And then up here, I didn't have space for the Sizzix. Uh, opulent cardstock packs so I have those bounds just up here since they didn't fit down in here but below that here I have my white pink and black cardstock so this is all from Michaels um, these vary from 65 pound to 110 pound cardstock depending on what project I'm working on and then I have my 65 pound rainbow assorted colored cardstock. This is also from Michaels. And then in the middle cubby, the one right beside that, I have some more um, like oversized white cardstock here. I have hunky dory glitter cardstock. I have foiled cardstock. This middle section here is mainly for just um, specialty cardstocks that aren't recollections solid cardstock. Um, so that is what I put in the center. And the next cubby over is kind of a little bit of my shipping items. I have my shipping envelopes. I have my sticker paper. Um, I have my printer paper over there as well. And then I have a couple of hunky-dory um, overstock items that I don't have in my closet just because I was wanting to use these collections next. And then in the final cubby here, I have my chipboard. I have my Altenew foam tape that wouldn't fit anywhere else. So I've just popped it there. And then I have also some more um, eight and a half by 14 cardstock up there. So that is everything that is in the cubbies. In the drawers in here, I use this for my electronics. So I have a little ring light in here, my laptop charger. I have some USBs in here. So this just houses all of my electronics. This bin here, I have some dull trimmer blades. These I like to keep and use for my chipboard. I also have um, a bunch of glitter in here and little shaker add-ins. So that's what I put in the center here. This far drawer, I don't really have access to it um, just with the printer here, so I don't have a lot in there. I put in a little wood project um, in there that I've not done yet, so that's just all that is in that final drawer. But that is everything that I have in this cubby right here. Moving on to my carousel. This is from Michaels. I'll leave a link for this down below. My husband got this for me for my birthday. So I went through and I organized everything in here. So I have my scissors along the side. In this drawer, I don't have anything. I have my ATG tape. And here is all of my crafting tools. So I have my 
scoring tool. I have some a glitter pen. I have my Cricut tool, so my Cricut pens. I have my Cricut tweezers, my pokey tool, my precision blade. I have my scoring stylus, and I have this little spatula. If you turn this, I have my Cricut scraper tool. I have some binder clips and um, I have my magnets here. I can always find them. I have this Canada Post envelope measure. This helps me for when I'm shipping out items. Um, I can tell um, what the shipping is, whether it's gonna be under or over an oversized envelope. And I have my ruler. I actually, actually was put on um, back order for a new ruler and I'm really excited about it. I can't wait for that to come in and show you guys. Um, I have my scoring tape here. I have a hole punch in there. I have some more binder clips. I have some pencils, some pens, my uh, advanced tape glider. I also have my art glitter glue. So this is the one that I was talking about. It's actually two ounces. Um, that once I am through with my art glitter glue, I am going to switch this over and I'm going to add in my barely art glue to this. Um, the refills were actually cheaper than buying a mini version of the barely art glue so i opted just to just buy the refill because i have the art gl glitter glue um with the precision tip all ready in the center here i just have foam brush i have some glue sticks and i have like an oversized glitter i have just a spray bottle and then i have some um 450 quick dry adhesive i don't love this one um but i have it so i do use it every once in a while i also have dry erase pens in here because if we go back over above my modular system i put together these little calendar bits so i have a weekly planner here and i have a monthly calendar here what i did was i designed these in canva and I printed them off and I had these frames that I got from the dollar store. So in the frame, they still have the glass. Um, I just use these, I use the dry erase pens on the glass and it they all dry erase off. So I update my weekly planner, I update my monthly calendar, and then um, every week or every month, I can go in, erase it, and I can update it for the upcoming week or the upcoming month. So this I thought was really helpful, especially having it like so close to my craft space and right above where... I have my laptop so I can make updates, make changes, make my plan, and it's right there and ready for me to go. So that was something really fun that I was really happy with that I put together. But that is it for my carousel. Other than that, my work desk is actually just a folding table. That is just what I have for the time being, and it works out really well for me, and it is actually quite large. I'd have more space if I didn't have this little shelving unit, my printer, and my carousel on it, but as far as like the space here, I find this to be large enough for me when I'm crafting. I can also just completely slide that over, and I have even more space for whatever project that I'm using. And then I just, this is one of the first Cricut projects that I made, coffee because adulting is hard. I just couldn't bring myself to get rid of this. Um, it's just one of the first things that I made using my Cricut. Um, beside that, this is my, where I film everything. This is where I craft, this is where I film. So this is the phone stand. Um, this came with a ring light and this was by We Are Memory Keepers. I got this at Michael's. Um, I was able to use the 30% off coupon. So it wasn't too badly priced. I have here, this is just my crafting lamp. And then on the windowsill ledge here, I have my Cricut Maker. It fits perfectly on the ledge here and it is super accessible when I need to use it. I'm able to just shift it over onto my desktop here, use it and then slide it back out of my way so that I can continue crafting on my space here. So that is it for my functional um, actual crafting space and how I have everything organized for easy 
accessibility with my carousel, with my cardstock, and with my grab and go projects, current projects. Next, I am going to take us over to my closet, and that is where I have all of my paper collections. Here is my closet. Um, it's it's still not perfect. It would be nice if I had one more little shelving unit to go here just to help with the organization of these items, but we're making it work. So this bin here, this is from Ikea. This bin I have holding just my Cricut items. So I have my vinyl in there. I have my heat transfer vinyl. I have some wooden blanks, things like that. Um, so when I am feeling crafty, I also have actually a couple of canvases in here as well. So when I'm feeling like doing something with my Cricut maker, I know I can go into this bin here and I'm going to have everything I need. I have my Cricut mats all hung up here with just a, um, like a 3M hook right there. So these are all easily accessible to me as well. Above that in this bin is just some more Cricut items, vinyls that didn't fit in this. I think I also have some more wooden blanks in here as well. Just stuff again that wouldn't fit in here. Um, this is just a box that we received a shipment in over the holidays and it was sturdy and I decided to keep it. Above that here, this is my Cricut heat press. So I have that sitting up here, accessible to me whenever I need it. And then in this bin is just some house items. And these are actually, so all the modular systems that I got from Michaels come with wheels. I, we have carpet here and I really don't move my modular storage around very much at all if at all um, I've moved it around a couple times just to a new location but I don't need the wheels so I just never attached the wheels to them and I have just stacked them together like this I want them to be stationary I don't want them to move so that is what I decided to do Next is these modular shelving units here that are big enough to hold the 12 by 12 cases from Michaels. So on the top here, I have a Gorilla Glass crafting mat. I have a couple trimmers. This black trimmer is my chipboard trimmer. I have my stamping platform. This is by Tim Holtz. I have that up here. I have a scale up here and then this trimmer I don't really use. But moving on to the bins. So this top bin here, I have all of my dies and my stamps and my embossing folder. And I don't, it's not the first thing that I reach for. Um, so I was happy moving these all to be at the top on this shelf. The next bin here, this has some various solid cardstocks. I don't have any pattern cardstock in here. I have my chipboard. I have solid multicolored cardstock. I have solid glitter cardstock. So that is where I come for my 12 by 12 sized sheets. This next bin houses some pattern cardstock and some more other scraps. These ones are not as easy to use as the scraps that I have in the bin by my desk. And I know that if I'm doing something that is more specific, I can come, I can pull this bin and I can pull from there. This next bin here, um, so this bin houses, I did a crafting event called Maker Mania. I've done two of them now. And with each Maker Mania, you get a crafting kit that consists of cardstock, mixed media tools, dies, stamps, embossing folders in the kit. So I have not actually used anything from those classes. They are all in their bags in this bin here. So when I am feeling ready to go in and follow the classes to make some of the projects that they made. I know I can just pull this bin and I can get started on those projects. This next bin here, I have some of the paper pads that I have already done a little bit of work on that I've already cut into. I found it easier just to put those into a bin all together. So I know to come here for those. These next two shelves, I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do with them, but these are all 
paper collections that I have used part of. So these were all originally I had stacked up in that bin beside my desk, um, but it was too many to have in that bin. So I narrowed that bin down to the paper collections that I really wanted to get into and get finished this year. And these were the ones that I was okay with pulling from later on in the year as I finished the projects that are in that bin. So these are ones that I'll pull later on in the year as I work through the items that are already sitting in my bin that I've had longer than the items that are on these two shelves. This shelf here, this one is my seasonal paper collections. So I have Easter in here, spring, summer, and fall. So I know if I am working on a seasonal card collection, if I'm working on a seasonal scrapbook album or scrapbook layout, I know I can come to the shelf and pull the season that I need. This shelf here is my little boy, little girl shelf. So I have um, my mermaid collections. I have baby boy. I have happy birthday. That is all just housed on this shelf. Christmas is the most that I have collections for. So these two shelves are all of my Christmas. This second to last shelf here, this one houses some stuff that doesn't really... Um, fit into any of the way that I've organized the rest of the shelves here. So I have my Coffee and Friends. I have my Pretty Mosaic by Prima. I have the Peach Tea Collection by Prima, which I am so excited to use. I have no idea what I'm going to use it for, but I'm so excited about it. I also have in here the um, little simple layouts and the simple card kits by Simple Stories. So stuff that just doesn't quite fit in with any of the other organization that I have here. And then the last shelf houses my paper boutique and paper tree collections. So these are ones that are a bit of a different size. These are eight by eight album or eight by eight paper pads and A4 paper pads. The mainly florals that I have, I don't think I have any Christmas for, um, from these companies, but I know that if I am making cards, I can come to these paper kits down here at the bottom for that. Lastly, over in this cubby here, I have all of my hunky dory. So mainly with hunky dory, I have Christmas collections and then I have a spring collection in there. So if ever I'm needing any hunky dory, I know I can come over to that section there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this crafty cleanup and craft room tour. Please like, comment, and subscribe to be notified whenever I post a new video, and we will see you in the next creation video. Bye.